Show. My name is Carl Azus. I'm happy to see you this Wednesday. We have an update for you today concerning the rippling effects of the ongoing worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. It would be nice to tell you that all that has gone away, but no, the disease that originated in China in late 2019 is still causing problems. One big reason for that is the Delta variant. Viruses like COVID and the flu naturally mutate. They change, new strains or variants form, and they can reinfect people who've already recovered from previous versions of the virus. Health officials say the Delta variant is the main form of coronavirus that's spreading now in the United States. The Centers for Disease Control says there have been more than 870,000 positive COVID tests recorded in the past week and more than 4,800 deaths related to the virus. At one point in mid-June, the U.S. was averaging fewer than 12,000 new infections per week. The Delta variant is blamed for this increase. Health officials say it's far more contagious than previous strains of COVID, but most medical officials also say that existing COVID vaccines are effective in preventing people from being hospitalized from the Delta variant. They say vaccinated people have fewer and milder symptoms overall than those who catch Delta and haven't been vaccinated. One of the vaccines, the one made by Pfizer and BioNTech, has just gotten formal government approval for the prevention of COVID-19. Previously, like the other two vaccines, it was only authorized for emergency use. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says the Pfizer vaccine meets its standards for safety and effectiveness, but according to medical information site Healthline, there have been conflicting studies around the world on the vaccine's effectiveness. One suggests it's as high as 96% effective in protecting people against the Delta variant. One suggests it's as low as 42% effective. And a former director of the CDC says tens of thousands of breakthrough infections when fully vaccinated people still contract COVID-19 can be expected. The overall survival rate of the virus is estimated at more than 99%, but that's not spread evenly across all age groups. And the federal government says it hopes the FDA's full approval of the Pfizer vaccine will encourage hesitant Americans to get the shot and encourage more organizations to require workers to have it. The mandates, the requirements that Americans be vaccinated or wear masks in certain places are controversial. Supporters say they're necessary to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Critics say wearing a mask or being injected with a vaccine should be a matter of personal choice. The spread of the Delta variant is one reason for the partial shutdown of a shipping port in China. This facility is a big one. It's the third busiest container port in the world, and that's contributing to problems with worldwide shipping. Ready, set, wait. Your new car, refrigerator, bicycle, sofa, computer, phone, held up by massive supply chain delays. How did this happen? After long months of pandemic shutdowns, demand among American consumers shot up faster than expected. So high, the Port of Los Angeles just had its busiest month ever, handling more than a million containers. But on any given day, dozens of ships can't unload because there aren't enough dock workers to handle that massive surge. They're in their own traffic jam coming, let's say, in the Pacific. Uh, you know, there can only be a few that could step up to the plate and unload their, their cargo all at once, and then they have to go back to China and fill up some more. Supplies are so shaky, Hyundai had to shut down a U.S. production line for a week. And Home Depot, one of the largest importers in the nation, has hired its own ship to bypass the bottleneck. On land, rail and trucking services are also stretched thin. Add a desperate shortage of shipping containers and the price for sending one across the waves from June of 2020 through March this year more than quadrupled. That's one of several factors. Raising the possibility that inflation could turn out to be higher and more persistent than we expect. Persistent is the word. Since some supply chain analysts are already predicting these troubles with summer shipping could affect Christmas shopping. 10 second trivia. Which of these US states has the most border states? Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, or Nebraska? There are two U.S. states that border eight others. One is Missouri, the other is Tennessee.
A major disaster has been declared in Humphreys County, Tennessee. It concerns catastrophic flooding that occurred there last Saturday, and the disaster declaration will speed up government help to the areas that need it. Last weekend, several storms passed over Middle Tennessee. They brought more than 17 inches of rain to some communities on Saturday alone. That led to flash flooding in the region, and the waters were so powerful in some places that they washed away everything in their path cars, roads, some homes were pulled off their foundations. At least 21 people lost their lives. Others were rescued by first responders, family members, or friends. Officials say they're still searching for 10 people who haven't been accounted for. Phone and electric services were lost, at least temporarily, and the debris that the flash floods left behind piled up so high in some places that it made it harder for rescue crews to search them. Flash flood creates a rush of moving water that can sweep a grown man off his feet, a car off the road, and even your entire home off its foundation. When the ground becomes so saturated that water can no longer seep into the soil, it begins to run off quickly into rivers and streams, and this causes a rise in water and a flash. Densely populated areas have an extremely high risk of flash flooding with the additional concrete and less grassy areas for the water to soak into the soil and they can see flash flooding very quickly. In mountainous terrain, the combination of gravity plus the easy runoff can lead to catastrophic flooding when all of that water is funneled into rivers, creeks, and even the valleys. Remember, flash flooding can happen in the blink of an eye. That's why it's important to stay alert and pay attention in case a flash flood watch or warning is issued for your area. Pepperoni and jalapenos. If I could have only two pizza toppings for the rest of my life, those would be the ones. They're not particularly unusual. Anchovies and pineapple, hopefully not together, have stirred up a lot of debate over the years. We've also heard of bacon pickle pizza and sloppy joe pizza. But what about watermelon crust pizza? Is that even possible or good? It's probably only a matter of time till watermelon ended up as pizza crust. And now Domino's wants a slice of the action. This is equally confronting for us. Adding sauce and cheese and pepperoni. But it does look pretty good at the oven. Pretty good? That's a war crime, posted one TikToker. Domino's, I can't keep defending you, protested another. Domino's Australia said it was inspired by TikTok chef Oliver Patterson, who whipped up a couple of watermelon pizzas earlier in the summer. But Patterson told Newsweek, in order for it to taste good, you need to fry the watermelon to get rid of excess water and use barbecue sauce instead of tomato sauce. Barbecue apparently pairs better with watermelon. Even Domino's admitted, We think it might be an acquired taste. But look at the weird pizza taste people have acquired. The new Crown Crust Pizza, made with perfectly grilled mini cheeseburger gems. And then there's the hot dog pizza crust that Pizza Hut sold in countries like South Korea. Pizza Hut, loyal crust to pizza. Before bringing it to the U.S. The hot dogs are just all right. They're not amazing hot dogs. As for watermelon pizza, suddenly putting pineapple on pizza isn't such a crime against humanity. Some big Domino's, don't sell it, please. Don't worry, Domino's told CNN. This was a joke made especially for TikTok. But it certainly gave people something to TikTok about. Now, critics might have been like, watermelon you thinking? Just the idea leaves them crusty. For others, it's a fruitful suggestion and easy anchovies to make, and it ensures that no option is left behind. Yesterday, we heard from Columbus East High School. It is located in Columbus, Indiana. Folks there left a comment on our YouTube channel, which is the only place we look for your shout-out requests. I'm Carl Azus for CNN. <laughs>